Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines Israeli airstrikes target homes in Gaza as Palestinian protesters face deadly violence. New York University graduate students end strike following tentative agreement in the US. Algerian forces arrest over 900 people in rising crackdown in Iraq protests. And for our video section, we bring you a conversation between Roger Waters and Vijay Prashad on the Israeli apartheid and Palestinian resistance. In our first story, at least 10 members of a Palestinian family, including eight children, have been killed in an Israeli airstrike. The strike hit the Abu Hatab family house in the Shati refugee camp in Gaza in the early hours of May 15th. A health official stated on Saturday that the casualties would rise as many people were believed to be trapped under the rubble. At least 140 people, including 39 children, have been killed by Israeli bombing in Gaza so far. Houses and agricultural land have been targeted and major power lines are at the risk of collapse. Families are evacuating from Gaza as Palestinians mark the 73rd anniversary of the Nakba on May 15th. Israeli airstrikes have also destroyed a building which houses media companies including Al Jazeera, Middle East Thai and AP. Blackouts and damage to power network have also affected access to drinking water for 250,000 people. Around 97% of Gaza's water is already undrinkable and the situation is worsened under the 14-year Israeli blockade. As per a May 15th report by the WHO, an estimated 10,000 people in Gaza are currently being displaced. At least 37 health workers have been injured and five facilities have been damaged. Blockades on Israeli-controlled crossings have meant that medical supplies are not able to enter Gaza either, and medics, are patient, medics and patients are also not able to leave. Meanwhile, Israeli forces have brutally attacked the Palestinian protesters in the occupied territories. At least 13 protesters have been killed in the occupied West Bank since May 10. Armed mobs have been attacking Palestinian people, their homes and businesses. Two Palestinian children were injured in Jaffa after far-right Israelis attacked their home with firebombs. There have also been reports of Palestinian homes being attacked in Akka. Israeli settlers and intelligence forces fired live ammunition at protesters in Sheikh Jarrah. The Palestinian Red Crescent reported 1,757 injuries in the West Bank and Jerusalem on Friday. At least nine people in Israel have been killed so far. Despite heavy violence, Al Jazeera reported that over 200 protests were held across the West Bank on Friday. Thousands of people also gathered along the borders of Jordan and Lebanon in solidarity. Protests were also held on Saturday morning, including in Nablus, where thousands gathered to denounce the Israeli occupation. We now go to the US where graduate students at New York University have ended their strike. Over 2,200 student workers, organized by the GSOC, United Auto Workers Union, had been on strike since April 26th. They had been demanding a fair contract including higher wages, healthcare coverage and better protection for immigrant students. The GSOC announced on May 14 that a tentative agreement had been reached. This includes a 30% increase in the minimum wage of hourly workers in the first year of the contract. The wage will now be $26 per hour. However, this is still lower than the earlier demand for $32 per hour. The minimum wage will increase by 50% to $30 per hour by the last year of the contract. However, the stipends for PhD students and their incomes as teachers will not be included under these hourly increases. The agreement also includes the creation of a new fund to cover out-of-pocket health costs. Health premium coverage will also be expanded to 95% for workers who do not have premiums covered. The agreement will also mandate sanctuary protection from immigration and border agencies including ICE and CBP. The child care fund will also be expanded and six weeks paid parental leave will be provided. Another important demand placed by the striking students was that the police be kept off campus. However, as per a brief update posted by GSOC, it is unclear if the university has agreed to the demand. The GSOC stated that the agreement recognized, quote, that cops are a health and safety workplace issue. We now go to Algeria where over 900 people were arrested on May 14th in the latest crackdown on the Hirak protests. People have been demanding radical democratic and economic reforms, including an end to the military's role in the government. May 14th marked the 117th Friday protest since the start of the Hirak movement in 2019. Thousands of people protested on Friday in the capital Algiers and other cities including Satif, Oran, and Satif and Oran. This was just days after the Algerian government imposed a ban on unauthorized protests. Riot police were deployed in several areas and protesters were violently arrested in at least 23 provinces. Police forces surrounded protesters from all sides outside the Al-Rahma mosque in Algiers. Protesters in the Bab al district were similarly surrounded to prevent their protests from getting bigger. Around 10 journalists from Algerian and international news organizations were detained. Accused protesters are often, arrested protesters are often accused of undermining national security and unity. There have also been multiple reports of the torture of detainees since in, during interrogation. Since 2019, several news outlets covering the protests have been censored and blocked. Activists have warned that the latest crackdown is related to the upcoming elections in June. Iraq protesters have stated that they will boycott the elections if there are candidates with ties to the former regime of Abdulaziz Bouteflika. 
incumbent president abdul abdul majid tebone himself came to power in 2019 following an election which is widely boycotted and finally we bring you an excerpt of a conversation between roger waters and vijay prashad on palestinian resistance and the global anti imperialist struggle it's a small platform i've said it before and i'll say it again it's my it's my platform it's lots of other people's platform as well but as far as it pertains to the israel palestine question it's the platform all our brothers and sisters all over the world irrespective of their race color creed this religion blah 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 nationality deserve and should have under international law equal human rights that's the end of the story get that into your thick heads israeli government and if you won't come round to subscribing to that basic fundamental idea Israel will be history. That's this is a this is a very important thing you're saying because you mentioned the Human Rights Watch report, which after so many years finally has said that Israel is an apartheid state. In 2014, 2017, the UN Economic and Social Commission on West Asia already said that, but well, it's never too late, right? Ten years ago, uh, Roger, you recorded a version of "We Shall Overcome" as part of your stand against the medieval siege placed around Gaza. Last year at Nakba Day, you did another version of, of "We Shall Overcome." It's a powerful version. In it, you choose you 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 saying we choose human rights instead. And we'll walk. We'll take back the land. We'll plant our olive trees from the Jordan River to the sea, and from Myanmar to Lahore. The thugs will fear to tread. No more kicking in. the dog we choose human rights instead um we choose human rights instead reflect a little bit on why you chose we shall overcome to record then and again and i suppose again uh, in 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 the service of the palestinian cause well because it, it's a recognizable anthem All right, it's it's the music is is gospel. Uh, where 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 are the words gospel? I do not know. Maybe there is some attachment with um, one or other forms of uh, of Christianity. I've no idea. That doesn't form part of my attachment to it. I'm attached to the idea that right and wrong, good and evil, are identifiable. and that those of us who choose to subscribe to the notion that we should sus- should support good and oppose evil and in consequence of that that we believe that there is a a fight that's been going on certainly in the western world for the last 500 years mainly the fight against slavery but it it when we look at it from our perspective now it actually spreads all around the world it's actually the fight against imperialism that's all we have time for today we'll be back on monday with more news from across the world until then keep watching people's dispatch